Today I'm at St Mary the Virgin Church at Buckland in Oxfordshire. It's a good example of a church of two different periods, the Romanesque and the Early English. These windows in the chancel date from the 13th century. They're rather unusual because they don't have a hood mould over the top to protect the glass, but they are a really regular run of openings. Whilst most of the church is built of rubble construction, the buttresses here are built of ashlar, where the stone has been smoothed off to form a fine finish. Here in the large porch is the outstanding feature of the church, this Romanesque doorway. And the beauty of it is it contains a very early door indeed. This ironwork dates from the late 12th or early 13th century. Standing here at the West End, we can see that this nave is long, wide and tall. And just behind me is the former North Doorway. You see it has a round-headed top. This is part of the original Norman church. The chancel was a rebuilding of the 13th century and it contains two very impressive tomb recesses on either side. This one is on the south side and you can see it retains a lot of its original carving and this rather happy looking face on top of the arch. On the opposite side, we have this lovely ball flower decoration around the edge of the twin tomb recess. On the south side of the chancel is a rather severe group of three seats, 13th century Sedilia and Piscina. But tucked away in the Piscina is a rather unusual piece of sculpture. This is a continental alabaster carving of the Magi, which dates from the 16th century. Here in the north transept, the fenestration has obviously been changed. There were once individual lancet windows here, which have been replaced by a central group. And if you look very carefully on the edge of the dress stonework, you can see above my head that the stone has been keyed to take plaster. So when this lancet window was filled up, the original stone was plastered over to hide the join and has since been uncovered. Looking this way, we could almost be in a different church completely. The south transept was completely lined with mosaics in the 19th century as a memorial. It's by the firm of Powell and Son, and it really is of the highest possible quality. I just love ensembles like this, where every little detail was conceived to be part of a whole. Just look at the detailing of this lamp behind me. The theme of the tile work is the Benedicity, and we have a selection of panels representing various aspects of the world and its contents. I love these whales, don't you? Here, three doves of peace. A praying angel. Some deer. A well with a windlass to pull the bucket up. And two young children. Trees of the forest, all that is green. And here a bishop giving his blessing. There are of course much earlier features in the church, such as this medieval grave slab with Lombardic lettering around the edge and this wonderful cross incised into the stone, which unfortunately has now lost its brass. In the north transept, 
is the monument to Sir Edward Yates. Absolutely typical of its period, and you can see that there's very little Christian symbolism in it. It's topped by his achievement of arms, and then as we look down the side, we have cherubs and garlands and so on. There's no cross, no prayers, no religious iconography at all. Underneath the west window, here we have reused Romanesque carving. Here on the north side, we can see the courses of stonework that represent each season's building. Once you start seeing horizontal lines, you'll recognise their great regularity, each about a metre apart. And above all, when the parapet was put onto the wall, there's a very definite line where the stonework has changed, just above that round-headed Romanesque window. If you compare the relatively severe wall of the Romanesque Norman nave on our right to this wall of the north transept, which is 13th century, you can see there's more mortar involved, but also this string course coming along horizontally, dropping down below the course of the window before picking up and going round the buttress on the corner. You see how much more accomplished the design of the 13th century part of the building was. From this north side too, you can see the roof line of the chancel has been considerably lowered since it was built in the 13th century. Above my head is the scar on the east face of the tower to show you where the roof would have been. Buckland Church is just a couple of miles to the east of Farringdon, between Farringdon and Oxford. The church is normally open every day.